Hello, my name is Mike Badger and today we're going to be making a robot from recycled tin and junk and it's going to be fun. Hopefully that's okay, yeah. You can see my workbench there with all my bits and bobs on it. So basically what we need is some tin cans which are readily available for anybody who wants to look around. Um, always amazes me you take a a label off a tin can and underneath there's something actually quite beautiful you know they have these ridges in them to give them strength that's why they're corrugated like that. but uh you know a tin can is a beautiful thing you know so all you've got to do is take the label off and it, all of a sudden it's assumed a completely new identity. Now, we all know what one of these things is, it's an opener. So um, you've taken the lid off. Now we need to take the bottom off and maybe this rim as well. Although some tin openers like this take, they'll take the rim, rim off as well. But just for time, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use my tin snips. Now these things... Are readily available in chandlers um, so you're going to need a pair of tin snips like that you're going to need um, some little panel pins the right size don't get them too small because you want to be able to hold them because uh, you don't want to be hitting the wrong nail and then um, you're going to need like a little little nice uh, light hammer and a piece of driftwood or uh, off cut really um, and some tins and bits and bobs and stuff that are laying around in the bottoms of drawers which you can always reinterpret into different things uh, you know the world's your oyster and it's also probably best to have some plasters not too far away as well because we want to make sure that um, we don't cuss ourselves but we might do because you know it is quite hazardous uh, but it doesn't need to be if you're careful so just treat it with respect so okay let's get tin snips going I've got an actual bigger pair um, which I use all the time but you know it's up to you what you want to what want to invest in they're perfectly adequate in fact I'll show you so this is a cheap pair oh yeah that's something, something to be aware, aware of as well some tins don't have lids on the bottoms. They have a molded bottom like this. A lot of dog food tins and cat food tins tend to be like that. So they just have like a, a, a lever lid at the top. So try, try and avoid the ones which have got a molded top and try and go for the ones which have got uh, rims on the top and the bottom. Can you see that at a, at a proper lid? So you get your tin snips, hold it like this um, in your hand and then cut through it. Like that goes through really easily and cut down to there so one straight cut down there now this is sharp as i said before so just be careful so treat it with respect push that down a bit like that and we get our tin snips and then we're going to cut along this, this line here okay. cut along the line like that and open it up and when it gets to there We'll go the other way and again making sure that we don't hurt ourselves in any way. There you go. And all of a sudden you're looking at a quite a substantial piece of material there once it's opened out. So what we'll do now is we'll just neaten that edge off. And then we'll cut along this line. So push your and then cut so you push and cut you push and cut and that way we're not going to get any horrible jagged edges on the tin when you cut it because you know we're making an ornamental sculpture here we're not making a, um, a toy for children to play with we're making something which is hopefully great to look at on your mantelpiece and a um, little bit sci-fi a little bit b-movie so here we go we'll cut that edge off as well 
again so you push up and then cut and that way we don't get any nasty jag jagged edges also best to put all your um opus because they're really quite sharp these things into a little bucket a little, little tin so they're off the way so now we've got a piece of tin like this you see it's golden on the inside and it's silver on the outside so let's make a little silver robot um okay so we'll just go like that gently open it out a bit so there's our piece of off cut wood which is laying about so let's think about that's going to be the height of the robot and um, so we'll cut that off about there cut off the tatty end as well if you want you don't want the label on it or the residue of the label and then we'll cut that about there i think about in in half and then what we do is we bend it like this in half that piece of tin and then we open it out again and then we pull these edges down like that get your thumbs in and try and manipulate it so it goes round like this okay and on this side here like that so we've got this kind of shape happening now with a groove down the middle and that is going to be our robot's legs so I'll put it on there like that you see it looks like a pair of legs on there so, so what we'll do is now um, we'll get our panel pins here maybe get that a little bit more in shape like that And then we want to tack this onto there, not too far down, probably about halfway down the edge of the piece of wood. Because you, you want some um, relief on the other side. Put our little hammer, tap that in. One in there, drop my hammer. We'll get another panel pin there in here and then we'll turn that round there like that can you see these like little pair of legs happening there it's getting looking cute already okay so we do the same on this side as well Get your panel pins in. And then again here, down here. So there we are, we've got, it, got his legs on now, or her legs. Okay, then um, we'll use the other bit of tin that was there. And that's not quite straight there so i'm going to cut that off so it's nice and nice and straight across there it's again a uh, 90 degree angle like that pop that in there so it doesn't get in the way and here what we're going to do with this quite like this line here across there it looks like a a belt or something so again manipulate it with your fingers and you know just being careful of the edges but it's very very easy to move as you can see it's really quite pliable in fact you know what i mean i'll show you what you can do with this i mean good little tiny pair of scissors cuts this stuff see so you don't even need to have panel pins. um tim snips if you don't want to you know, if you if you really want to do something it just shows you you know but just you know let's just say treat it with respect you don't want to have uh you're cutting yourself okay so now we get that on there measure that up with that edge there which is kind of the neck of the robot and get it in the middle see so it's the same distance on both sides that's important we want some symmetry here bend that over like that and then we'll get another little panel pin in here which will tack this onto the top the 
same on the other side. So all the robots that I've made are similar but different because they've got individual characters determined by the size of the piece of wood you use or the the type of tin you use. Maybe you'd want to make a, a robot with a, a design on which is um, comes from a tin with different designs on. So tins, Coleman tins. They all open up in the same way as I, as I showed you. So now we've got this little body together. So a little bit of wood visible down the side here, which isn't very nice. So we want to cover that up because when he's standing there, we want him to look authentic and we don't want people to know that he's actually uh, got a wooden frame to him. So I've got another piece of tin here from which I've opened up oh, I'll use that bit for the arms I think I'll use this bit here from the tin that I opened up earlier so I'm going to cut that down the middle and I'll actually cut, just cut down straight like that one. get that one the same width so measure it up by eye don't have to be too precious about the the size of these things. I mean, a lot of it is instinct and intuitive. Um, play with this. I'll just straighten that that edge off. Sorry again. So it's nice. Remember when I what I said? Go cut, press up, and then cut, press up, and then cut. And that way we don't get any nasty um, nicks on the side of the tin. So it's quite smooth, you know, you'd have to cut really push push your hand on it, but it is hazardous, so as I say, just be careful with that. So now we're going to put this little um, piece of metal down the side there, which again is, you know, it's it's, it's from a, a tea caddy or something. Um, so I'll put a little tack in here. And it's great because these little panel pins look like rivets then, and it looks like these... <laughs> These robots have been ri riveted together. It's a little bit long there, so I'll just cut that down a bit. That's right, so I've got that side on there, and I'll do the same on this side. See there, I'm going to use the edge of that tin on the edge of there, so it just looks a little bit nicer. Line it up slightly. Same distance as that one, so we want to cut that about there, like that. And all of a sudden, once all the wood's um, gone and you can't see it anymore, it really does seem to look like a robot. Obviously, the kind of robot that I'm making here is one that is reminiscent of when I was young and on the uh, kind of kids TV programs at the time a bit of Flash Gordon a little bit um, 1950s B-movie type of robot not so much the um, Transformer robots and the game stuff that you get on video games and stuff like that which came a lot later okay so now um, another piece of tin here what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down the middle like that again just by eye doesn't have to be exactly the middle but you know do it by eye it's more or less the same and again uh, holding it between your thumbs and your fingers just try and press down there like that and give it a little bit of a shape like that so you're making this kind of a u-shape in it I've decided i'm going to give him gold arms because his body's silver and it's, a, it's just a bit of a contrast so again just 
folding the tin round. Obviously, you're going to be folding it along the the length of the grooves that way and not that way because if you did it that way, it'd kink. Because uh, so you so you, you're using these these grooves which are put into the tins to strengthen them. You know that's what what they're for, so they don't dent in there when they're getting transported. So okay, so we've got one potential arm here. So again, I push that down the side there. Now that we'll put it on that that way round, so they. So the gold's kind of facing that way, so and we turn it around there like that, and then we get another panel pin here. Remember, get it level up to the top there, and then it gets a little bit harder when you're going through two pieces of tin, but it's still very easy to go through. Okay, that's that one done. And then get another one in here. And then before we fold that round, I'm going to get this one in because if you hit it on there, it'll flatten that. So you've got to think about the uh, the process here. So here I'm going to do the same. So again. But now I'm going to use the edge of the bench. Now, or you could use a, the edge of a vice, or but if you put it on there like that, using the edge of the bench, you get your panel pin. Now a bit, so you can hold it. Get that up to the top there, nice and neat. That's it. Let the hammer do the work. Okay, and then we get another one at the top. Okay, so then you've got something like this, which is um, kind of see his arms and his legs now. But those arms are a bit too wide, so what we're going to do is bend these round a bit like this. You know, brute, brute strength. Maybe get a pair of bullnose pliers. These are really, really handy as well. And then just fold that round there like that. Get it started at least. That's it. And then same here. And then it's a bit easier to fold round. So then we want to get these like this. Right the way around like that. You don't need any more nails in. And then can you see where the do the same on this one? Fold it under. That's the one there. So there we've got a robot which is in need of a head and in need of some feet or a stand. It doesn't need to have necessarily have proper feet but it's up to you how far you want to go with this um, and how much you wish to embellish the robot this is just a very basic way of me showing you um, how it can be done so this is the bottom of a Coleman's mustard tin which I've just made a yellow submarine from um, but you see the bottom here so you, if you cut down there and take, take the bottom off there you get this so I think it just it was just laying there that second. Another thing is that, you know to allow the um, I always think I like to make this let let the sculpture make itself in some ways because you never know what you're going to find and you got like me and you got all this like kind of junk around and everything. It's it's nice for it to, to just reach out and find something and then it, it makes it really fun. Um, so that could really quite like that. That's actually on the top there like that. Let's let it go. shoulders do I like it I don't know you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna use this for something else I'm gonna cut the corners like this here on this sharp those edges anyway and then I'm gonna tap them down like this There's no 
those sharp edges and I'm going to use that as the stand actually or the, the feet I think I think that'll look pre pretty good but before I do that I'm going to sort out the neck there's another just a leftover piece of gold tin here which is which is really quite nice so if I yeah I think that's going to look better so what I'm going to do is put that down a bit it's a bit too long there's nothing here or the off cuts in here And then I'm going to get my, oh yeah, I really like that. Okay, so I'm going to bend that down like that there. Like that. And then I'm going to get my one of those pliers. Yeah, that's good. Get rid of these sharp corners by bending them over like that. Give it a nice kind of sci-fi look to it as well. Squeeze them. Yeah, that's that's nice. Okay, I, I like the look of that. Okay, so now we're going to get a couple of panel pins in the top here, and that is going to keep that top bit on. and get rid of any little sharp edges that there might be in the hammer. That's kind of looking good now. It's kind of looking like a proper robot. Okay, now um, it's up to you which you what you want to use for the heads. I mean, I, I've used all kinds of stuff. This guy is kind of like, uh, I found this piece of plastic and so he's kind of like a cat robot, this, this fella, because I quite like his, his um, sinister looking horns or ears, whatever. Um, but then again, you might find a nice old light bulb, which uh, it's got an interesting shape. Maybe that would like work, and um, or maybe the disc. This fella is actually made out of lead. It's very very easy to cut. It's quite expensive, but it's got a really nice patina to it, and a really nice kind of retro, kind of almost Dada esque kind of feel to it. And for this this he's got a, a perfume bottle an inverted perfume bottle as a head which is a really interesting shape which i love so they're all up there i put them up there to protect me and i found a load of these in a car boot sale once just stole valves from um i suppose from amps and transistors raid radios and what valve valve amps and valve radios and stuff they're all different different shapes so you get you know different sizes for different robots and stuff but um i think i'm going to use a small one for for this one we don't you know we want it to kind of be be in proportion so there's his head so how do we now attach this onto here well as you can see it's got these um little spikes on there and i I have punched holes in before to get this in, but to do it a quick, quicker way would be to find a piece of tin like this, which is again just um, left over from um, a previous sculpture that I've that I've made. I kind of I cut it there, so it's a little bit longer than what I need, and then you fold that bit over like this. And then, let's see how I do this place here. And then you get that bit over there and you make like a little lip on like that. Reduce that size so it's still very slightly there. And then once that's bent that way and that's bent that way, then you can bend it over and you can squeeze them together like that 
and you've made like a collar no you push down and put it together like that so you've made this kind of ring which is being held together by these two lips that you've put on the on the tin. So you put that in there, that's gonna fit in there nicely. So it actually needs to be a little bit tighter. So what I'm gonna do is make this a little bit longer and then it'll be a bit tighter for the right side of the room. So experimental. Screwdriver, and let's go put it up again. Get the adjustment right for the collar, that should be better. Too tight, and it won't go in, and too loose, and it won't stay there. So, and then we're going to get a nice little piece of tin, or actually, that's a little piece of brass I had, which is uh, just laying around again. So, I'll use that, cut that off there. Cut it into a little strip like that. We'll get our full nose pliers and fold that over like that. It's a bit thicker the brass actually, but uh, and if I push that on there like that, can you see the way I've got that now to slot onto there like that? Great. Hopefully this will fit in. Yes, I'll fit in nicely. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I'll just give that a little squeeze there, a little squeeze there. We've got this kind of shape. So now what we've got to do is tap that onto there, and then we can put the head on the top. So I'm now going to put a panel pin in there. We don't want to put it on there and crush the front and damage the front, so I'm actually going to put it on my knee here and push that through there. And the brush is a bit thicker than the tip. There we go, it's through now. That's great. Haven't damaged the front either. Right, that's through now. We also don't want the pin to go through and damage the front here, so just beware of the of the of the um yeah, right. Okay, so now we're gonna put this these nice little we're gonna use the um the, the yellow as well to give it a little bit of colour on it. So um We'll get this here and we're going to do the same again. Again, I don't want to damage the, the thing. I'll just put it on there. So I've got a couple of panel pins in here for this for the stand or for the feet. Try and keep it symmetrical again. So now that's the stand done. So all we've got to do now is uh, put the head on, see if it fits. Yeah. Okay. And there we have a robot. Hope you enjoyed it. Put him there next to his mates. It's like a mother, a father, and a child, isn't it? Cheers. <laughs>